time for consolidation as far as Indian aviation is concerned after an aborted attempt to take over Air India. The Tatas have set eyes on Jet Airways once India's leading carrier which is struggling to stay afloat. Tata's trust with aviation is nothing new. It dates back to the early days of Air India when it was run from Bombay House to their joint ventures with Singapore Airlines and AirAsia. But the fact remains, Tata's have never been a force to reckon with in the Indian skies. The latest move is led by none other than N. Chandrasekharan himself who has been looking to streamline the group's business interests in aviation for some time now. The big question is, is Jet the best opportunity? Will Naresh Goel go down without a fight? Is the government facilitating this entire deal and is it right for the government to do so? The big shake-up in the Indian skies is what we're discussing right here on the India Development Debate this evening. Joining us is an eminent panel of guests right here, Jitendra Pargav, former ED Air India, Dheeraj Mathur, partner and leader, Aerospace and Defence PwC, couple call, CEO and Director, Kappa South Asia, and Sandeep Parik, founder of FinSec Law Advisors. Thank you, each one of you, for being with us. And if I may actually begin the discussion, and please keep your answers uh, uh, short because I've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, you know, Mr. Bhargav, Tatars have been looking to make their mark in aviation business for a long without much success. Do you believe Jet Airways provides the best opportunity for the group uh, to give Gravitas uh, some direction to its aviation business? Now I think it is the best option for Tata's to make to emerge as a major carrier. Let's not forget the fact that they were the ones who started civil aviation in India. So if for them to acquire A, if the Air India was out of bounds for them, they did not take, and their earlier attempt in 2000 with Tata Singapore Airlines to take 40% equity was derailed by nobody else but Naresh Goel, as it is very often said. And now for Tata's to take over Jet Airways will give them a quantum leap. With Singapore Airlines as their partner, I don't think they can be any better product, both in terms of deep pockets, technology, and the kind of expansion that they can look forward to. Naresh Goel, unfortunately, had little options left for him. Considering the financial state, the Indian market dynamics, there wouldn't have been an option like, okay, in the next six months, eight months, ten months, he would have got airline to become profitable and therefore had surplus to pay for the various vendors, etc. So the writing was on the wall. Tata's have gladly accepted it. Of course, they would have seen merit in it. Naresh Goel, for him, it ah. would have been a very, very difficult situation because who would like to give away a product that he has nurtured? Poor point. So, but That's he exactly would have the certainly, question. But he would have, at okay. the back of his mind, certainly have the, had the Air okay. India example because if he has to delay a certain thing, get marginalized in the market, the value of the airline erodes. So this is the best time for him to find a buyer as far as okay, airline. Okay, Dheeraj Mathur. Dheeraj Mathur, the Tatas. Okay, Dheeraj Mathur, for Tatas, perhaps Jet is a big bet. But are Tatas the best way forward for Jet Airways given that no financial investor, I'm presuming, will be ready to shell out big money uh, for a bleeding airline? After all, it isn't just going to be a stake buyout, but I'm presuming Tatas will also need to infuse money to keep operations viable at Jet Airways. <clears throat> so I think the first thing is that we should be clear about one thing, that this discussion is really in the realm of speculation because Jet issued a denial, uh, and a clarification to the stock exchange this afternoon about the news in the Economic Times this morning, saying that as far as they are concerned, they, there's nothing in the pipeline. So this conversation is really about does it make sense for the Tatas to go, go, go through with this acquisition, uh, if at all. <clears throat> And uh, now as far as Jet, so, so, this, so within that realm of speculation, uh, for, as far as Jet is concerned, it desperately needs capital infusion. It needs financing. Um, it's got a huge, almost 20,000 crores of li liabilities. Uh, it's been cash positive in the last month or so, but largely due to short-term ad hoc measures that are not sustainable. So it desperately needs cash. Now... It has made efforts, private equity has had a look at it. There are options, private equity, you know, selling off stock in the market and so on. Uh, a strategic seller, uh, buyer like the Tatas would make a lot of sense because, because okay. they would not only bring the Vistara, the, the Singapore Airlines and AirAsia. So a strategic uh, partner uh. Would, would add to the airlines beyond just bringing in the money. Okay. Just hold and, that thought, and, and Sandeep Parikh, I'll come to you. This is more of a, you know, a corporate, yes, 
Give me a minute. Give me a minute, Mr. Mathur. Tata's have been a confused lot when it really comes to aviation business. Can't say the other uh, verticals that they're present in. Vistara with Singapore Airlines is a full service carrier. Then they've got a JB with AirAsia, which is a low cost airline. Will the jet deal help the Tata Group streamline their aviation business? I mean, that's that's a question that many people are asking. Is this going to be the big inroad into the Indian aviation space? I think so, because, you know, as you said, uh, the strategy till now has not been very clear. But I think jet is an incredible value for uh, for uh, for Vistara and, and the Tata Group simply because they don't have the base which are available. Um, I, I can give you my personal example. I fly jet because um, Vistara doesn't fly to any any other city from Mumbai except two cities, uh, which very, uh, you know, which limits my options. So it's 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 a huge, you know, they, they bring in the cash and they get jet airways uh, slots all over the country. So I think it's a win-win for both sides. And I think uh, this uh, if, if this works out, it'll, uh, it'll be good for aviation. I think uh, jet will get uh, uh, bailed out, which will be kind of uh, good for the image uh, of the aviation industry itself. We, we don't want another uh, uh, airline to collapse. We've seen several in the past. Uh, jet is way too big for it, uh, for it to collapse without consequences to the entire ecosystem. So I think it's a fantastic development if it happens. And it will also give uh, Vistara a kind of very, very clean and immediate uh, entry into uh, dozens of cities. Right, right. Uh, but Mr. Bhargav, I will come to you and I will, will discuss the government angle in just a bit. Will N. Chandra's big challenge be to streamline cost of operating jet airways? I mean, you know, if you look at the aviation manpower, uh, about 58,000 people in that sector, 26% of them employed by jet. What will be the way forward? Yes, from a brand point of view, we'll discuss that separately. But Jet's cost of operations, 21,207 crore rupees versus Vistara's, obviously a much smaller airline, much lower market share. But is this going to be challenging to streamline cost of operations for Jet Airways and the manpower that comes with it? You see, all global mergers, if you look up the examples, have been challenging things. But to say that they are not successful will be a wrong statement. You can make mergers very successful and many airlines have done it in the world. As far as the, you've got to look at the Tata and Jet Airways, A, both are private sector companies, so there's a big difference between if Tata's were to acquire Air India, there would have been cultural differences for the work practices were concerned. Here you will have a certain kind of a thing, okay, Jet Airways was founded 25 years ago, so they have certain legacy issues. Vistara is a new carrier, Singapore Airlines has been there for a long time, so they will be able to change the work culture, which shouldn't be a big thing. And they get what they get on the table is, large number of trained manpower, international network, because Vistara is still to get on to it. So you will have a quantum jump and it will be only a matter of years kind of a thing when they emerge as the number one Indian carrier, both on the domestic and on the international level. So there is a big thing. Now to say anything that the government will be paying, I don't think government is capable of trying to get both sides together and, and for the merger to facilitate the merger. Because if they had that potential and the capability, they would have been able to sell Air India by now. They haven't been able to do it. Now, I am very clear about it. As one of the earlier speakers said, this will be a major boost for the Indian aviation. Any collapse kind of an airline going bankrupt, again, not being able to pay the, pay the lessors and the banks, etc., would have had a very bad image problem for India. So this way, if you look at it, Tata's, Right. Keen on getting into the aviation sector, get a ready-made product. Naresh Goel needs assistance, so it's a win-win situation okay. Okay. for both carriers. Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mathur, after Telecom, Tata Sons Chairman Chandrasekharan obviously wants to clean up the aviation business. The question really also that a lot of people will ask is, is JET the right candidate? I know a lot of ready reckoners come with JET, but could they not have eyed uh, a younger airline with a younger fleet and all of that? Well, uh, <clears throat> amongst, so there are several pluses as far as JET is concerned. Uh, uh, it has the slots, the parking slots, particularly in Mumbai, where there is massive congestion. It's got a network. <clears throat> it's a network that is largely in Europe and the, and the United States and in the Gulf region, <clears throat> the Middle East, <clears throat> sorry. 
whereas Singapore Airlines and Air Asia largely operate in, in East Asia. Uh, they have, you know, more eastward sort of their operations are. So JET brings an international network, it brings uh, international partners, it brings international alliances. Uh, so there are a lot of pluses that uh, synergies that are created uh, through this, uh, through JET and this acquisition, which a younger, smaller airlines doesn't have. Now, you know, we still haven't really resolved the issue of that 520 rule. And, um, and actually, you know, one interesting thing is that I think one of, if you look at Vistara and Air Asia India, both of them do not have international operations at, at this point of time. They've both been trying to start them. There's been some controversy or needless controversy over that 520 uh, inter rule and its interpretation. But the fact is that, uh, that uh, airlines to make money and to grow must have international operations. And that's what... Uh, that's one very big thing that JET brings to the table. So um, uh, there's also an interesting uh, um, anecdote here. If you recall, one of the reasons why Kingfisher acquired uh, Deccan was also the, this, the, the fact that it needed to get around this 520 rule. Of course, that acquisition didn't work out at all. Okay, Different just reasons. give me a minute. But, um, Dira... but I okay. think... As far as Tata is concerned, for them to really right. grow, they need to go international. Right. Mr. Mr. Mato, give me a minute. And Sandeep Parikh, you know, we've had many discussions when this whole uh, boardroom battle was happening at the at, at Bombay House. Uh, Chandrasekharan surely knows that Ratan Tata's passion is there for aviation. In that sense, do you believe he's making a tactical move on his part to strengthen ties with the promoter group? Are we, are we reading too much into this? See, the, the first thing is I think the Tata Group's commitment to aviation is already there. They invested in uh, two airlines till now. So I think they're already in the space. So I don't think it's a strategic move to enter into a new space. They get more base, they get more international routes, uh, they get international routes period. Uh, so I think it's uh, certainly a huge uh, development from a strategic sense for them. Whether it kind of makes financial sense or a medium to long term, I think uh, that only uh, you know, uh, kind of more rigorous financial analysis would, would show, but uh, uh, clearly JET is uh, really important to uh, India itself, you know, as one of the panelists said, 25% of the entire workforce of Indian aviation works for JET Airways. So I think it will be a big problem for the government also if it uh, just simply collapses. And I think uh, the, the, it's, it's a good match for, uh, for Vistara and Tata. So I think uh, if it goes through, it would be uh, good for India and I think it will be good for Vistara and for JET. No, I think Sandeep Parikh, you make a good point there that, you know, the government wouldn't want JET to go under. In fact, there are some reports, Bloomberg also has put out a copy that says that the government is facilitating and putting, uh, you know, putting together this deal. They are, they, they, uh, they've asked other group to rescue JET Airways. Two of the things that they talk about is that uh, there could be a potential haircut that could be taken by state-run banks on JET's loans and the Airport Authority of India may forego some of the dues. Um, these discussions are in private and people don't need to be identified. I find this extremely difficult to believe that the government can facilitate by taking those haircuts. I mean, this is, this is going to be scandalous and nothing short of that. Uh, Jitain Bhargav, do you believe this is in the realm of being doable? Absolutely not. There will be a whole lot of criticism if the government was to take this path. And I'm sure with the kind of value that Jet Airways has, Tata's will be able to fund the airline, put in more money because they get on a table a ready-made product which has international network. I don't think it's the passion of Ratan Tata or the emotional connect with the aviation that will make them go for the deal. It's simple business proposition that is attractive for the Tatas to do it. Because had it been passion or the emotional effect, I'm sure they would have bid for Air India six months ago. It is a pure and simple and nice and makes a lot of business sense for Tatas to get in, have a quantum jump, because if they were to continue with Vistara and Air Asia, it's going to take them a good number of years before they reach some scale of operations in India and be counted among the top three. So therefore, this is the fastest way of doing it. And since Naresh Goel Jet Airways requires funding, 
requires a strong uh, a company which can put in more money for expansion because let's not overlook one factor. I keep coming to the Air India example. You see, let's imagine a scenario, this was not to take place and the race Goel wasn't keen on it. After three years, with other airlines expanding right. because they have the money to expand, he, the market share of Jet Airways would have dwindled and gone down further. And it would have been akin to what Air India is suffering with us 11.8% of the market share in the domestic market. Few people interested in it. Likewise with Naresh Goel, so this is the ideal time for Jet Airways to look for a suitor. And I'm sure Tata's, though as very rightly you said, it's in the realm of speculation as of today, but Tata's will take a decision of this kind because if they want to be the number one player okay. in the Indian aviation market, okay. this is the best option for them. Right, right. Jitain Bhargav, Jitain Bhargav, hold that thought there. I, do, I don't think we can talk about passions when a deal of that kind does happen, uh, but it also does point us into a direction where Indian aviation is headed towards consolidation. And I have a quick question for both Sandeep Parikh and Mr. Mathur. And uh, Mr. Mathur, let, let me ask this question to you. This isn't a pretty picture for Indian aviation. I mean, first it was Air Deccan, then it was Kingfisher. Airline, Air Sara, now Jet is into trouble. Uh, this is obviously pointing us in a direction of consolidation. But does this also point us in a direction where some kind of a policy intervention is required? I know aviation is a tough business to be in. And I think Warren Buffett once said, if there's any business that he's never going to touch with a barge pole, it will be aviation. But do you believe Indian aviation and the way it's headed, consolidation, yes, is the way out. But will it also be followed by policy intervention? Or should it be followed? Well, actually, yeah, I, it, it has to be, you know, because <clears throat> it's unfortunate that India continues to have the most distortion, distorted tax regime as far as the aviation tax sector is concerned. There is the issue of the, uh, the taxation on ATF. It's amongst the highest in the world. The price of ATF is much higher in India than it is in the entire region. And, you know, the central government and the state governments must agree to bring ATF into uh, the realm of the GST. They must, if at the very minimum, they should allow airlines to offset their, uh, their uh, uh, to, to take credit for their, um, uh, for their, the input GST that they pay. So at the, that's at the bare minimum that they need to do. They, of course, they should also bring the rate down itself, but at, that's the bare minimum. So really, and, and if you look at MRO, the issue of imports, customs duty on MRO, on parts and so on, uh, it's, it's, it's complicated and you know, everybody knows it. These problems are well known. And in fact, particularly on the customs duty side, it's not as if it's the, the quantum of revenue involved is huge. So net-net, there is definitely need for the government to make an intervention and rationalize the taxation, make it more reasonable um, so that airlines right. can grow. We've had a history of, as you rightly pointed out, a number of airlines going under. The, Right. There are, the, 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 you know, this pattern ah. occurs internationally also. But equally, <coughs> internationally, in the last year and this year, airlines across the world are doing extremely well. Right. You know, they, there has been Sandeep. a pickup in the global economy. Right. The, the United right. States is doing very well. Yes, Mr. Airlines Mathur. in the U.S. are doing very well. Mm. They're, you mm. know, they're, they're reporting profits and so on. Right. But it's only in India that... Point. Mr. Mathur, know, give me a minute. Last year was a good year because the, uh, crude prices fell. Because I also think airlines in India are always looked at as a rich person's vocation and, you know, rich people fly. That's always been the sentiment in India, and which is why it's a high, heavily taxed, heavily levied uh, sector. But Sandeep Parik, you know, first it was telecom where 14 operators made way for three now, not even four because Vodafone and Idea is one entity. And now we are seeing in aviation, uh, you know, options narrow down. What is this eventually going to mean from a consumer point of view? You know, from about five or six operators, we are now down to four, eventually perhaps be down to three. From a consumer point of view, I'm presuming this isn't going to be great news. Certainly not. I think uh, competition does work. So I think uh, uh, fewer, fewer participants would certainly increase the costs. Uh, and uh, I, th I think aviation is uh, it's not unique, but it's one of the few enterprises where uh, so much is dependent upon external factors, in particular just one external factor, which is the price of oil. Almost 40 percent of the cost uh, of an airline is just aviation fuel. So I think there is some scope for rationalization there. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's very, uh, very luck oriented. You know, if oil prices go up, they go into losses, they fall and they become highly profitable. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very cyclical business uh, anywhere in the world. 
so I am not sure that just reducing price on, of ADF will have an uh, kind of permanent impact, but certainly uh, so some rationalization would be useful. And uh, I think fin finally, I think it is just uh, the nature of competition is such that it will provide better service and lower costs and uh, fewer people we have uh, would, would obviously take away from that. So, I think that is the only downside to having fewer players in the market. Fair point. Right. Right. And a quick last question to you, Mr. Bhargav. What does the presence of Etihad mean for this transaction? I mean, Etihad is a foreign entity sitting on the Jet Airways uh, equity structure as well as its board. What will that player now do? The whole idea of Etihad was to make Abu Dhabi this hub. Now I'm presuming many more Indian cities are going to be these hubs with Vistara. See, while it or, be or for Etihad to take a call on whether they try and give away the 24 percent share or not, but I'm sure Tata's will have sounded in the discussion with Jet Airways on what's going to be the future ahead. Having said this, I want to add one more point that in addition to what Mr. Mathur said that Indian aviation is a high cost industry because of taxation and various things. But let's not also overlook the fact that our airlines have been equally absurd in charging fares which are below the cost of producing a seat. Now, you cannot be working out to increase your market share or retain your market share just because a large number, large quantity of, a large quantum of capacity is being going to be inducted in the next five years and therefore keep losing money. They have to read the right. writing on the wall and said, we can't take a suicidal course and keep charging fares at low and sustain a 20% market growth. What would happen if this growth goes down from 20% to 15% but airlines start breaking okay. even? And yeah. that will be yeah. the final solution to it because we can always keep looking at the government and say government must intervene, reduce taxes. The fact is when you got into this industry, you knew it's yes. a cost factor. I mean, the, the reality is if you want... Effective industry. Yeah, if you want government out, you can't keep going back to the government for intervention when the sector or the airline is going through some turbulence. But on that note, completely out of time here, this is a deal which is yes in the realm of speculation. Sources seem to be suggesting this is likely to be taken up by the board tomorrow. But for now, JET has denied it. Uh, how is this going to change the contours of Indian aviation is exactly what we've discussed and debated right here. We'll of course put the spotlight back when it does become official and we hope to see all you gentlemen back with us uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much, Jitain Bhargav, Mr. Deeraj Mathur and of course, Sandeep Parikh.